Hello, B family. My name is Gabela Mohale, and welcome to one of our first B Connects, which is a conversation series helping you and I build a life of love, wellness, abundance and impact one brick at a time. I'm so excited for today. We've been having a conversation in the background. <laughs> um, I've got an amazing guest today. She's a Christian content creator. Mm -hmm. She is a geologist. Yes, I am. My, am I correct yes, in saying that? Um, she is a mom. Mm -hmm. I am ex especially excited to have a conversation with you. I've been seeing you on Instagram. I think you guys will know her. Libizola Haiki Musidi. Popularly um, known as Mrs. Moss. As Mrs. Moss. I was going to say, <laughs> how do you... Miss Moss. Okay, and Ms. we're going to talk about that. We are going to talk about We're going to talk about that, yes. yes, yes, yes. I'm yes. really, really excited to have you so today. Nice. I believe that myself, as well as my community, um, we're going to learn a lot, you know, from what God has placed in you. There's so much value that you carry and we are all about, you know, growing. We're all about getting to know God um, more. We're all about being real and being vulnerable together as a community. So mm -hmm. I am looking forward to the conversations. I just want to, like, get straight into We've it. We've been holding ourselves back <laughs> We've been holding, for, like, two can hours. Can I tell you guys? <laughs> can I tell you guys? So we've been having conversations yeah. and I would literally have to say, stop. Yeah. Like, cut mm -hmm. it. Cut mm -hmm. it because... We need to have this conversation live mm. with everyone else. Yeah. So I'm going to start with five questions. No okay? problem. Now, these are just um, random questions okay. that um, I find intriguing that I would like to know about you. And I think everyone else would like to know about you. So number one, what's mm. your favorite childhood memory? Memory. I have memory problems. Really? So I'm going to have to dig very <laughs> deep okay. to remember this. But I think my, okay, this is my favorite one. My biological father was mm -hmm. a clown of a man. Mm -hmm. Loved him to bits and pieces. I'm a daddy's girl through and through. He's since passed, unfortunately. Okay. It's been about 16 years actually now sure. okay. that he's been gone. But he used to wear um, Mr. Miyagi suits to work. Okay. Yes, he wore kung fu <laughs> attire <laughs> to work. This and reminds me, someone I know can, can probably do this, but yeah, it's, I yeah. won't name names. Let's not shame, <laughs> let's not name and shame people, but he used to do that. And the memory that I remember is with my best friend, because I've had a best friend since I was seven. She's okay. been in my life. And, and she's still your best friend yeah, now? she still wow, is. Wow, love um, it. Yeah, a blessing and a half. Well, she's like it. my sister. Sure. She's my sister. Okay. So he would dangle us by our feet while doing kung fu sounds. Mm. That sticks out for me in this moment. I don't know why, but sure. that's one of my best childhood memories. Yeah, and you did say you were a daddy's girl here. Through and through. Even now, I'm my stepdad's baby's girl, Aww. daddy's girl. So I just, I just love the men in my life. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> <laughs> and um, what is a story that your family often tells about you that you would like to share with us? Sure. A story. Yeah, or memory or thought. Um. My mom always mentions how I've always been ladylike. Okay. So she says when I was even like learning to eat food, mm -hmm. I never ate with my mouth open. I mm. always had my mouth closed because, honey, I'm a lady. Come on, Ooh. somebody. So she said, you've always been this way. Like, you've just always been very prim, very mm -hmm. proper. So she's always commenting on that when she sees me now as an adult woman. That you've been the same, mm. like your 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 how you present yourself yeah. since you were a child. It's um, been constant. Mm. Yeah, she mentions that a lot. Introvert, especially in this season, extrovert. Extrovert. I well. see that. I'm out there. Uh, like you, you and my husband <laughs> could have a conversation. I, I yes, see it. yes, yes. What does your morning routine look like? Oh, now my morning routine looks like waking up at two thirty in the morning because I can't sleep. Okay. Um. So. 2.30, literally 2.30 to 3.30, that's like my wake-up time, depending on what time I sleep. Mm -hmm. The first thing I say when I open my eyes is, good morning, Holy Spirit in mm. me. Good morning, Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Mm. Good morning, Father on the throne. Because mm. I need to remind myself that those three have my mm. back. Right? Sure. So that's the first thing I say. The moment I gain consciousness is to sure. say good morning. And then I start um, either preparing the post for that day because I'm doing daily posts now. Mm -hmm. um, I am a workaholic. 
joke, mm-hmm. uh, but um, you just like me start preparing. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. Somebody stop me! But anyway, I'm doing it for the Lord, so don't judge Absolutely. me. Absolutely. Um, so I'll start preparing because I do spoken word on okay. my page. I do um, teachings, mm-hmm. so I prepare the spoken word piece for that day, mm-hmm. and I ask God, "What do, What do you want your children to hear from me today?" And Absolutely. He will give me whatever the message is, whether it's in the form of spoken word. And sometimes I wake up with a poem in my mind, so then okay. I have to literally start writing mm-hmm. it. Or um, I start. And this is at two o'clock. This like is two o'clock in the morning. Okay. Two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. Okay, go. Um, and this is involuntary, by okay. the way. I'm not doing this because I want to do it. I'm mm-hmm. doing it because see a Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. So wake up, start prepping the post, start doing the editing and everything else that's needed for that day, audio, etc. Then I start prepping for the lesson because I do okay. daily lessons. Mm-hmm. So then I. God gives me scriptures in the weekend as to which scripture is going to speak to which part of the message because I sure. do series. Okay. This week we're doing the wait. Mm-hmm. So how to wait on God, why we struggle to wait on God. So okay. these are questions I'm asking him because my lessons are my lessons. Absolutely. And I mean, they're for me. Mm-hmm. So it's things that I'm asking him. And I think that's the beauty of hurting out loud. We spoke about that because I'm hurting out loud right now is I know which questions to ask sure. because I'm in that season. Mm. So it's the questions I'm asking and his answers to me through scripture. Mm. So then I will start reading that scripture and say, what do you want me to learn from this? Mm. Right? Because sometimes he gives me a scripture and I'm like, how is this relevant? Mm. Like, you know, for instance, we were talking about um, how to, why we struggle to wait on God. And God said, go to Galatians 5. Yeah. And I'm like, but Galatians 5 is about dragging us for Mm. sexual immorality and fits of anger Mm. and, you know, those Mm. things. Why is that a reason why I can't wait on you? Yeah. So he gives me the scripture and I'm like, I don't know, God. Mm. But when I read it, he's like, you struggle to wait on me because you haven't crucified your flesh. Mm. I see. Mm. I see. (laughs) I see. Oh, I see what you're doing, God. Mm. Okay. Yeah. You know, so then I have the scripture in the weekend. So in the mornings. I will then piece it together to say, what are you saying, God? What are you trying to teach Mm -hmm. us from this, right? So after I've done that, get ready for the day. I'll play music. I love to sing. So I'm singing, getting ready for the day. Then depending on whether baby's with me that day, I'll drop her off at school. Then drive myself over to work. Work on my machines for eight hours. Mm -hmm. Write my reports for eight hours. Kind regard Mm -hmm. for eight hours. And then go back home um, to my little one. Or to myself, depending on the day. I have a I have a question, but we'll get to it. Mm-hmm. If you were to write a book, Ooh. what would it be about? Surrendering to God. Mm. Can you elaborate on that? Because I think a lot of us mm. struggle with it. We struggle with really surrendering hard. to God. Um, yeah. 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 Can you can you touch on that? I've been a Christian for fifteen years. Okay. Sixteen this year. Okay. Because I'm turning 31. Come on, girl. We're the same age. Uh, thank you. We're the same age. Uh, yeah. yeah, we are. Yeah. 93. Yeah. Yay, I didn't know that. <laughs> okay, girl. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, so uh, I've been a Christian for 15 years. Mm-hmm. And I thought I was living a life of surrender because I accepted the Lord as my Savior. Yeah. And, you know, I prayed the prayer and I got baptized. But my recent walk through life has shown me how much I'm not surrendered. Sure. So there's a danger as a Christian to think you're living a surrendered life when you're not. Mm. And I Mm. think it's, if I was to write a book about it, and I'm still learning it, okay? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if there's any book I'd want to write, it would be about surrender. Mm. How to do it, why to do it. You know, I'm a scientist. I'm always thinking why, how, who, you know, how to actually do this thing. Because we take it for granted that, Just going to church is being surrendered to Mm -hmm. God, but allowing the spirit to lead is, it's a lifetime work. And I think a lot of us don't understand it. I don't understand it in this moment. But maybe through what God is teaching me, I will come to learn. Um, That's actually my word for this year is Mm. surrender. Sure. Um, So I'd want to teach that in a book. I'd want to crystallize that into a piece of work, like a book, to say those who will come after me, those who are with me here now, those who are seeking God, Mm. here is a guide Mm. as to how you do it. Because I feel like we think we are, but But we're not. Mm. And I mean, you mentioned earlier on that um, your morning routine, you wake up, and the first thing you say is, good morning, Holy Spirit in me. Mm -hmm. Good morning, Jesus at the right hand of the Father. Mm -hmm. 
and good morning, Father, and on, on the, the throne. On the throne. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned that you literally wait on God to give you scriptures that yeah. you'll need to either, you know, teach on that, mm -hmm. or he gives you scriptures in the weekend to mm -hmm. teach, right, or prepare, basically. Yeah. And I think that is a part of living a surrendered life, mm -hmm. when you literally wake up every morning and you're saying, God, what is it that you would like me to do today? At yeah. least for me. Yeah. I think um, learning to surrender looks like each morning asking the Lord, what would you have me do today? Definitely. Um, being more aware of God. Would you say I'm correct in saying as a child of God, a born again child of God, uh, scripture tells us in Corinthians that he who is... Uh, being joined to the Lord has become one spirit with him. Mm -hmm. Would you say I'm incorrect by saying we are always in the presence of God, what sometimes absent is awareness and oh, being aware of him? A hundred and one percent. What does I will never leave you nor forsake you mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It means with every breath I am there, mm -hmm. right? But I think that we, we separate ourselves from him. Mm -hmm. I love the scripture in Romans. It mm -hmm. says, what can separate us from the mm -hmm. love of God, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. it goes through this list of things. And at the end of it, it says, none of that, not mm -hmm. life, not death, nothing. Even sin now does yeah. not separate us from God Absolutely. any longer. Absolutely, which is something a lot of people struggle to yeah. believe. It doesn't. Mm -hmm. The blood of Christ is way too powerful for all sure. of that. So yes, you you are not incorrect in saying that. God always is, mm. always is. Mm. What, when the Bible says he keeps a watchful eye over, over you, you. Sure. it means every, he knows when you sit and when you rise. Sure. Every moment of your life, even when you're committing that sin. Sure. Hello, somebody? He's there. I can attest to that. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that is why the Bible says you're grieving the Holy sure. Spirit. Because he could leave, but he doesn't. He doesn't. Because he's a gift. He's being endowed in you. Mm. So he's there, but he's grieving. He's mm. cringing. He's like, oh, we shouldn't be doing this. Right? Sure. But he's there. Moment sure. by moment. There's a hymn I love that says, moment by moment, I'm under his care. Mm. Every single moment when I'm rebellious, when I'm righteous. Yeah. That is the most amazing gift. Is just God giving us his spirit despite our shortcomings. Sure. So he's always there, you're right. Sure. Always is. Tell me about your encounter with the Lord. When did you encounter Ooh, him? How was your encounter with yeah. Jesus? I want to hear it all. Well, I happy <laughs> Where were, in fact, oh. where, where were you before? So, <laughs> Christ. Ah, oh, oh, how me. were you? <laughs> I was in the eighth. Uh, so I was so lucky to to be raised by a woman who encountered Christ okay. before me. And that is mom? Mom. Okay. I, I recognize my mother as not only my physical mother, but my spiritual mother. Absolutely. And she found the Lord and sought the Lord. Okay. And I happened to be under her wing while she did that. Sure. So when did I encounter Jesus? I, I saw him mm -hmm. through her life, mm -hmm. through being at church. Sure. But did I resonate with it? No. Okay, I was there. I'm a kid, of course. Gotcha. We're going to go mm -hmm. to Sunday school. Then we're going to look pretty in our dresses. Yeah. Then we're going to sing, uh, Yes, Jesus Loves Me. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm just here because <laughs> my mom's here. Come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get you. So that was really my introduction to this guy, mm. right? Called Jesus. Mm. And I grew up so, like, so, like, so until my teens. And I always served in the church. I mean, I used to be a a worship leader at children's so, church. Didn't all? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was the girl with the notes. Come right? on. So, you still uh, have the notes, uh, girl. Uh, something, you know, from, from. Uh, so, yeah, um, that was my journey till my teens. My mom um, found, because my mom loves the word. Mm -hmm. I think that's where my love of the word comes from. I see. Because mm. you mom. love the oh. word. You what can, like, you love the book. word. And it's something beautiful oh. to watch. Obsessed. Sure, I love it. So my mom loves the word and she was just longing for substance, mm. you know. I think sometimes, especially in the world of prosperity gospel, mm. we lose the essence of the word of God because we're seeking it to tell us we're going to be rich in five sure. seconds. Okay. Right? And we sure. forget okay. the essence of why exactly we're in Christ. We're not here to gain mm. worldly riches. Mm. We're here to transform our minds, to mm. renew our minds, right? So she was longing for that and... God bless whoever introduced her to the church that she went to because there they really are about the word. The word, okay. That's so good. then 
She left me though at the church that was at because I liked it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It was familiar to me. But she said, you need to go on your own journey. And I'm here. If you have questions, I'll answer them. But sure. I'm going to go where I feel like I need to go right now. Mm -hmm. And she left me. But ultimately, she kept engaging me on matters of scripture mm -hmm. and she would sit with me and say look what the bible says about this and what we're doing at the other church is it in line with what the word of god is saying sure. and okay. she challenged me to start to question our practices and i think as christians we just adopt the practices of whichever church we're in we don't question it we don't we're not the, like the bereans mm. who hear the word from the preacher and go back home mm, and read and, and say is that in line with what god said just because pastor said it sure it's truth uh-uh Come sure. on, somebody, we know false prophets out mm -hmm. here in these streets, all mm -hmm. right? So you need to be familiar with the word. Mm -hmm. So that's where my love of it came from is this is the barometer against which I measure myself as yeah. a child of God. Yeah. So I need to know what's in there. Sure. How do you obey what you don't know? Mm -hmm. Impossible. Sure. Mm -hmm. You have to know so you can obey, mm -hmm. right? Faith comes by? Hearing. Yeah. Mm. So we need and to... And hearing he yeah. the word of God. Thank you, baby. Mm -hmm. So then that's where that comes from. Sure. My mom is my spiritual mother. She taught me that she challenged me to start searching the word. And the church that she joined harnessed that. Mm -hmm. And Bible study was real Bible study. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about Greek origins of words and Hebrew origins of words and I why this it. word means this. You understand what I'm saying? I love so I'm it. a geek and a nerd. Yeah, so I'm like, yeah. I like this. Mm -hmm. So then I realized that I can do this myself. Yeah. I don't have to wait for other people. The internet is full full of resources yeah. hello yeah. google it mm -hmm. literally it's mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. so you start to read and you start to engage and it was very much um legalistic how i was doing it okay. to be honest there wasn't um a full understanding of grace okay what i learned you know later on as to what grace is and this was because i went through a very deep experience in my 20s so okay. this, i'm talking about my teens now yeah so now i'm in my 20, 20s i'm dating this guy i really like him he's really cute it's always the guys eh? Um, it's always it's the guys. <laughs> I'm just saying every problem starts with men, <laughs> menstruation, <laughs> mental health. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. It's so, false though. It's false. That is mm, false. That is false. That is so, false. So, mm -hmm. uh, I bet this guy loved him to bits and pieces, yeah. dated him for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And, whew, am I ready? I'm ready because God said I must say it, so I'm going to say it. Okay, So, it. we ended up conceiving okay oh that was hectic right sure. and you think that you'll never do something until you do it yeah and i ended up doing something mm. i never thought i was capable of mm. doing sure i never as the oh. christian girl who loves scripture never. as a mm. jesus girl mm. sure how do i do this mm. but i did mm. and that wrecked me sure all that false sense of self-righteousness and knowing scripture and understanding the Greek origins of Absolutely. words fell off of me mm. because I failed to obey mm. in a time of intense pressure. Mm. That was a reckoning. So mm. if, I, if I think back to how I encountered Jesus, I encountered him in the depression of that. Mm. Because now all the things I held onto to give myself a, a false sense of holiness, gone. Gone. Yeah? I get you. So now, who are you? Sure. Who are you? And who are you now to the people? Yeah, who are who've you? Who've always looked at you and said, this woman just is who on fire you? for the Lord. Who are you? You know what I mean? And mm. I couldn't answer that. And so God said to me, design yourself. Mm. You don't like who you are now. Design yourself. Sure. So I took a piece of paper. I said, I want to be a woman who's like this, 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 sure. this, this. I wrote it down. God fearing. I want to fear you, God. I want to fear you. I want to be patient. I want to be hardworking. I wrote it all down. And over my, my 20s, God, and in engaging in the word as yeah. well, because I went back to the word, the thing about sin, and I think it's a blessing in disguise, it gives you fresh eyes for the yes. word when you are dealing with yourself, hmm. right? When you're in the field, which is like, that's different. Yeah. Theory, we can theorize. We can. Yeah, don't be sexually immoral. Yeah, but when you're in but it. But honey, when you are in the when bedroom, in the lights are dwindling, the candles are kindling. And you're like, how on earth am I here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hectic. Get so you. then it gives gravity to the sure. word. It brings it to life to repent and come back as the prodigal son, you know, and, and, and appreciate the compassion of grace yeah. that God says, I cast your sins as far as east is away from sure. west. You get that. Mm -hmm. You feel it in your gut, mm -hmm. right? Then you have 
a, a, an added reverence for God. It's mm. like, oh God, I am this person and yet you love me. Mm. And that just inspires you to want to be even more righteous. Sure. I think that's what the Bible speaks about when it speaks about guilt that produces unrighteousness versus yeah. guilt that produces righteousness. Sure. Sure. If you have the right brand of guilt, sure. the Ooh. right brand of guilt, there's two brands. We got to get the right brand. We're not going to move with no, no name. We're moving with the righteous guilt, right? And the righteous guilt yeah. produces righteousness. Sure. If you're feeling guilty and you keep falling into the sin, you are in the wrong brand. Sure. Change your approach. Beating yourself down, telling yourself you're undeserving of God's love. That's the wrong brand. Sure. Because that's the voice of the enemy. And he wants you to keep believing that so you keep falling. And he continues to yeah. accuse you. The moment you understand sure. grace. The moment you understand grace. Listen, he who is set free by Christ is free indeed. Mm. So then I got that brand of guilt. I got that brand of guilt and it changed my life. Yeah. And I went deeper into the study of the word of sure. God, right? Sure. And I think that's the foundation on which now my whole ministry hangs. Those years in my 20s that I just read. Mm. And singleness is beautiful because you have that time. Mm. And if you capitalize on it, you equip your spirit to brace yourself for your 30s because yeah. it's late in the 30s. Yeah. Right? Mm. right? So I planted the seeds of the knowledge of the word of God from that experience. Sure. And that's not the only experience, honey. <laughs> This journey when Christianity is valleys, it, mountains, and hills. That's why it's called a journey. All right? It's a journey. Hi. Girl. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. Yeah. But that's basically how I encountered Jesus. Is I encountered him through my sin. Mm. Even now, I'm encountering him through my sin. Sure. You know, that's, that's, that's why you start to understand. Because I never understood for the longest time, Gabriel, why did God convene with the enemy pertaining to Job? Why? Why are you allowing the enemy to torment the one whom you say is righteous? Mm. Uh, why? I never got it. I never got it. But it's because we encounter God. Come on, I want to stand up. We encounter God in our downfall. That's when he becomes as clear as HD, Max Pro Max. 4K, 4K, 4K audio, HK. <laughs> I don't know. Mahale knows those things. I don't know those things. Oh my god. But gosh. we encounter God in the valley. Sure. In the pit. Sure. Sure. That has been the story of my life. Speaking of the pit. Baby. Speaking of the pit. I've found mm. that there are parts of God, and I always share this. Mm. There are parts of God that I've discovered in the valley of the shadow of death. Mm -hmm. And I see that... Um, and something I love, you're talking about the behind the scenes mm. of the valley of Girl. the shadow of death or your season yeah. of the valley of the shadow of death. Can yeah. you tell us more about that? What parts of God have you encountered in that? And what does your valley of the shadow of death mm. look like? First of all, I'm mad that God wants me to do that. Mm. Because it goes back to hurting loud, isn't it? It's embarrassing. Yeah. To the flesh. To the flesh. Mm-hmm. So my flesh is embarrassed mm. to sure. sit down and bear my soul mm. publicly. But God has called me to do it. Yeah. And as I said, I'm surrendering. Yeah. So I'm going to do it. I don't understand why. Because yeah. you're giving my enemies content. Mm. But it's helping so many people. Yeah. Whenever I get a DM and somebody says to me, you're behind the scenes, saved me. Sure. God says, see, this is why I'm asking you to do this. My behind the scenes is a picture into the reality of where I am right now, right now. through my divorce. I was once married, honey. I once mm. had a diamond ring. What you mean? <laughs> they chose me. Okay, I was chosen, honey. On, love all the cows. You know what I'm you're showing? Still, you're, you're still chosen. My wedding... Best wedding I've ever been to. Sorry, can't tell me Come nothing. Um, but unfortunately, the way that things went wasn't great. And so I'm having to navigate all of that. Yeah. Um, huh. And the way that it happened also was not godly, please. Okay. Um, stumbled hectically. Yeah. Oh, I stumbled. Tripped over myself. Mm. Tripped over my self-righteousness. Mm. The Bible says, mm. if you think you are strong, take heed lest you fall, mm. and I fell. Mm. And whew, it was such a dark time, my word. I really was in the pit. The only prayer I could pray was help. help. Sure. Mm. Help. Yeah. 
And um, sure. Hmm. Thank God, because he's a deliverer. He delivered me. Unfortunately, post the deliverance, I couldn't continue with the marriage. Yeah. Um, so I had to go. But um, I was telling you earlier that mm. in the time that I was going through this, I said to God that I don't think when I married this person, I consulted you. Mm. I think I moved with the biological clock, you know, it's sure. ticking. Mm -hmm. And I want to have kids before I'm 30. Mm. It was not, God, is this the man that you see fit to sure. carry the vision you've endowed in sure. me? with me, and that you've endowed in him mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. God was not center of that decision. Mm. The script, and I call it the script now because I always say to my friends, I feel like I was following a script. Sure. Go to school, get married, have a kid, and I reached the end of the script, and I looked at society to say, what's next? Mm. Okay. okay, what do I do next? Sure. And society went, mm. I don't know, stay. And you're like, ha, ah, no, guys, you've been telling me for 30 years that I must do, do what's next? Mm. I, I, I'm not finding the next. Sure. Right? Yeah. So where was God in that? Mm. Huh. I remember watching this video yeah, in Yalla Vanzand and she said, honey, did you want to get married or were you an autopilot? I said, girl. Girl. What do you mean, girl? Why are you coming for what me? What do you mean, autopilot? <laughs> like, what is autopilot? Define sure. autopilot. I had to come to terms with that. And so I said to God, God, uh, when I got here, I don't think I consulted you, sure. but now I'm consulting you because this is becoming unbearable for me. Yeah. This is destroying me yeah. and I can no longer stay. Yeah. That's my desire. I don't want to stay, sure. but not my will. Come on, Jesus, in the garden of Gethsemane. Yes, not me, God, not my will. Your, Your will, will be done. Mm. Huh. Do you know what that takes? To know that you want to pack your bags this now. minute yeah. and say, until you say something. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not moving. But Mudimo Akaka is the undefeated heavyweight champion. You understand what I'm saying? Mudimo Akaka is the. Oh, gosh. Yeah. You understand? Mm. So, what he did was he said to me randomly on a random day, mm. read Isaiah 54. I said, okay, God. That's actually my anchor, one of my anchor scriptures mm. for the year. But, honey. There comes a time where the scripture says to, you, to, to me, or said to me, like a wife, huh, whew, married young but deserted. Hey, I will call you back to me. I am your husband. Mm. I said, okay, God. Mm. I said, okay. Sure. That's the day I packed my bags. Yeah. Oh, God is good. Sure. So he told me to go. Yeah. <laughs> you asked him. I asked him. Yeah. And he told me to go. It's yeah. not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. Yeah. It's hard. It's very difficult. I mean, now I need to worry about what a carburetor is. What's that? Mm. I don't know what a carburetor is. And now I need to take out trash. And I sleep by myself. Yeah. It's not easy. But God is my husband. He is your husband. And he provided for me in miraculous ways. Sure. Because what is a husband? A provider. Yeah. And honey, when I tell you my apartment is glistening. Come on. Oh, no. love that place. I have to come visit. It heals me. Come over. Come on. I'll have you over for tea. Yeah. <sighs> you said something earlier on, and you mentioned that marriage, it's about dying to self, yeah. but you need to be careful which parts of you die. Mm. And that hit me hard. Yeah. Um, and you mentioned that you realized that there were certain parts of you that died that were not supposed yeah. to die. Yeah. I want us to talk about that. What mm. did you mean? If you go through marriages in the Bible, I don't know one person who had a perfect marriage in the yeah, Bible. Absolutely. It's riddled. Paul says, if you marry, you will have many worldly troubles. Mm. He writes that. In First Corinthians mm. seven, and we don't look at that. Oh, we have a look at this: women submit, men love, submit to one another under reverence of Christ. But he says, sure. in marriage, 
there will be many worldly travelers. Is this the same scripture where he actually says, I would much rather that you do not marry. He said, if you don't have a wife, don't seek yeah, a wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? I mean, I've read, read that word. passage and I've always been that like... That was the first red flag. You mean. That's <laughs> it. First red flag <laughs> saying... What do you mean? This thing is wild. Mm. Marriage is a difficult calling. Mm. Oh. It's not for boys and girls. And you know why it is difficult? And I said this to you earlier. Yeah. Because the flesh comes yeah. to the surface yeah. in marriage. Yeah. You think you're this holier than thou, woman of praying, whatever. <laughs> Your husband Chow. thinks he is a servant of the Lord. Like, but in marriage, the flesh comes to the surface Chow. and asks you to look it in the eye. Let me tell you. All right? Mm, mm. You can't pretend in a marriage. No, you can't. You are bare. Mm. You are bare. And the other person sees you. Mm. The issue with how we deal with the flesh is we make it personal. Sure. Sure. Mm. So his fleshly expression affects me negatively because you personalize You personalize, his flesh. God, it's me. Yeah. Sure. You, you, you want to beat it out of him in sure. various ways or he wants yeah. to beat it out of you and not abusive, please no. Yeah. But you, you get what I'm saying? I'm yeah, using yeah, an analogy. I so what I mean by... Marriage is a big calling, is it requires you to deny your flesh more mm. than any other relationship you'll ever have. Absolutely. Your mother loves you even though you are fleshly. Yeah, you can storm and, and shut you the can. door. She still she loves still you. Love you. Mm. Yeah? In marriage, hey, that's difficult. Mm. Mm. Yeah? To love somebody even in their fleshly expression, very difficult. Why? Because you have your own traumas they have that own they trauma. trigger. So you're reacting out of your flesh yeah. because of your traumas. And then you, as you react, they react. So it's this loop of reaction. Yeah, flesh, you man. Because like, you mentioned that triggering is man. also, it's, yeah. it's the so flesh. Whatever you, you are triggered by is, is your flesh manifesting, mm. right? Because the flesh wants to satisfy whatever it feels now. Yeah. If you say a word that makes me uncomfortable, I'm going to lash out in anger because I want to bring you to justice now. Sure. But if you're led by the Spirit, you say, revenge is the Lord. Sure. Can you say that in your marriage? Mm. That when your husband or your wife wrongs you, revenge is, is the, the Lord. Lord's. It's not mine. Mm -hmm. Can you bring the scriptures about forgiveness? Mm. That if you don't forgive one another, mm. God doesn't forgive you. If you don't forgive your spouse, hello, the whole Bible applies to marriage. Let's stop taking out Ephesians 5 Fair and putting enough. it on a pe sure. pedestal. Yeah. Yeah. This is your brother. Yeah. This is your sister in yeah. Christ. Yeah. If they're not in, in Christ, sure. this is your fellow human being, yeah. your neighbor, yeah. your husband, your spouse is your neighbor. So take the whole word and apply it to your Jesus. marriage. Sure. That requires leading by the spirit. But where do we let loose the most? In our romantic relationships, yeah. we don't feel like we need to filter ourselves. So you're your full self, fleshly self, not spiritually led self, mm. and you wound each other. I was saying to one of my friends that I'm having such a hard time now with the concept of marriage having been where I am because I feel like it's a den for the enemy to use our flesh to wound each other. Sure, sure. And, that, oh, and we wound each other. Yeah, right? deeply. I wounded my husband. Mm. I'm not going to sit here and act holy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not just him. It was me too. Yeah. Because I was not spiritually led. Mm -hmm. And I'm even saying now, I'm still learning how to be spiritually led. So that's what I mean by your flesh is just so rife in a marriage. And if you are not led by the spirit, you won't be able to take a beat when you're triggered. Sure. Because the fruits of the spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, mm. self-control. What is love? Kindness. Not keeping a record of wrongs. Wrong. Hey. Eh? You've been telling him for 500 years to put the sock in the laundry basket. Mm. He ain't putting it. But you keep recording that this is the yeah. 555th time. Yeah. And the anger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now what you want to do? Revenge. What you going to do? I'm not going to sleep with you. Yeah. Where is the spirit in all of this? Even when you don't tell yourself, I'm not going to sleep with him. Yeah. But yes, subconscious. That, that, yes, yeah, on yeah. a subconscious level. We spoke about, um, we had a long conversation <laughs> before did. this. About your no being your no and your and yes, your yes being, yes. being yes. Absolutely. And if your no is yes and your yes is no, you risk building resentment. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying this, people might say she's divorced. What does she know? I know it because no, I'm you divorced. Know, exact my point. I know it because I, I recognize that this yeah. is why I am now a divorcee yeah. is yeah. because I didn't allow the spirit to lead me in my marriage. Mm. And so the flesh took root mm. and sin killed love. Mm. Right? And here we are apart now. Mm. 
that's what we have to show for it. Sure. For not letting the spirit lead what we do. That is the fruit of the, the flesh. flesh. And what is the, the fruit of sin? Death. Death. And my marriage died. Mm. Died because of both our sin. Yeah. Who do I blame? The enemy? No. No. Just some things yourself, yeah. are you. Yeah. Your flesh. Yeah. Your greatest enemy is your flesh. Yeah. The enemy exploits the weakness sure. that already exists, exists. in you. Mm. So deal with yourself. Mm. That's what I need to learn to do now mm. is deal with me. With you. Mm. Sure. I think after a podcast that my husband and I shot where we were quite vulnerable about us going through a very difficult time in our marriage, um, man, we got an influx of DMs yeah. and some emails, you know, yeah. of many people saying that they've experienced the same and some are experiencing the same. I mean, someone actually sent us a DM saying, after watching the podcast, I now regret getting a divorce. Sure. Um, and I think that made me more aware that there is a huge battle as mm. far as marriage is concerned. Hectic. As someone who is currently going through a divorce, what would you or how would you encourage a woman, we'll say a woman for now, um, on the other end, who has been hurt, has now developed resentment, mm. uh, feels anger, mm. deep anger, mm -hmm. um, and is just struggling to forgive. God, what does forgiveness look like in the state that I'm in now? How would you encourage them as someone who is now having to go through a divorce? So she's staying in her marriage? Yeah, she's in the marriage right now. She hasn't left. Surrender. Stop trying to do marriage your way. What does surrender look like in her shoes? How you act towards your husband should be aligned with the spirit at all times. Mm. Even when you're angry, what mm. does the Bible say about anger? Mm. Do not let the sun set on your anger. Mm. So you do everything in your power to make sure that the sun doesn't set with the anger that you have at this moment. Okay. What does that mean? Have the hard conversation about why you're angry. Being silent, keeping the peace, not going to work for you. And you mentioned this earlier on yeah. that um, we can't do things saying, no, we just want to keep the peace. We need to be very yeah. honest. Yeah. And sometimes honesty means confrontation. Yeah. And in a humble And in a way. healthy, humble way. Because when we spoke about that, we were speaking about false submission. Yes. That we think agreeability is submission in a sure. marriage. Sure. But that breeds resentment. If you're not vocal about how you feel. I need you to say that again. Agreeability. Ain't submission, sis, okay? Yeah. You can disagree with your husband and yeah. still be submissive. Yeah. And I think the men in our lives also have to come into the knowing of that. Yeah. Because the models that they've seen of submission is dad gets his way yeah. all the time mm. with mom. Mm. So they expect that of their spouse. Can we mention that about the church as well? The examples or the models that we see in the church as well? Of marriage. Of yeah. marriage, it's yeah. The, whatever the man says goes. Mm. It's his way or the highway. Mm -hmm. But that is not Christ-like leadership. Remember, your husband is called to love you. And I said to my friend, I ain't going to marry no man who doesn't understand that you are called to love me as Christ loved the church. Come on, the yeah. calling on men is higher mm. in marriage. And that's just, it, it's, it's a responsibility that God has given to them. You ought to love me as Christ loved the church. Let's speak about how Christ loves the church. Died for her. Mm. For her. And in, in our context, dies to self. Mm. Men have to die to themselves for the woman. Yeah. So therefore, you cannot come charging in, telling me you're the head of the house. Christ didn't come on earth telling you I'm the God of all things. Mm. He served. You serve your spouse, right? Christ died for the church. Christ sanctifies the church. So even when your wife is wrong, the Bible says that you, you clean her and present her to yourself. Sure. Clean. So you are dilulu. And it is the solulu. <laughs> in when this it case. comes to your wife. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? Marriage, yeah. She can do no wrong. Sure. You afford her the grace as the weaker vessel. Come on, let's read scripture and live it. Mm. Does it mean you're not going to be hurt, man of God? Yeah. Are you not going to be annoyed? You shouldn't be. Why? Because you love her as Christ loves the church. Mm. Right? Come on, can we read the word yeah, and live yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is my future hope. If I don't find somebody who understands that I'm sorry, it's not going to work. Then, Tina, understand that you submit first to Christ, yeah. then to your husband. Because sometimes you even abandon Christ for the sake of your husband. Mm. That is the wrong order of submission. So where your husband comes to contravene the authority of Christ in your life, you, no. Immediately, no. Okay. 
Christ first, then you. And that needs to be an understanding between the two of you. That means there's things that I won't agree to. Yeah. Because you're coming in, in between me and my, and my Christ. Mm -hmm. Who comes before you in the sequence of submission, right? But also, men submit to, it says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Mm -hmm. So that means in the, in the marriage, there's a give and take. We both submit to one another. It's not just the woman to submit. Yes, I have an extra charge to submit, which means in an argument, woman of God, mm. when he's speaking and he's passionate about something, you hold back. Mm. I didn't know that. I'm a very strong woman. I'm learning, yeah. Mm. I'm a very strong woman. I'm very strongly opinionated and I know what I want, when I want it, how I want it. You mm. know what I'm saying? And I get you. So when he would say something, I'd say something. Yeah. Then he says something, then I say something. Yeah. But as a woman, you are meant to submit. Yeah. A, a, a soft reply turns away anger. Mm. Come on, be yeah. gentle in spirit, woman yeah. of God. Doesn't mean you're going to agree. Sometimes you choose the timing that this is not the right time. Yeah. Because he, he is in his fleshly trigger, and I can't bring my flesh to the fight. They're going to fight each other. Yeah. Oh, and it's a bad hey, fight. Yeah. Somebody's going to bleed. Yeah. So spirit, how do I handle this? Yeah. I even pray to the Holy Spirit now. How do I handle my husband? Sure. My ex-husband? Yeah. How, what do I do? And God will tell you exactly what yeah. to do. Does it make sense? You know what God told me to do? Turn the other cheek during this divorce. All right? When somebody asks you for your shirt, give them your give coat them. also. What does that mean? I moved out with barely anything. Sure. Four cups, four spoons, sure. four uh, champagne glasses, four, 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 four Sure. Right? I moved out with barely anything. Listen, girl. I left my dining room set the entire room. Love it. Left it. Sure. Why God called me to turn the other cheek in this divorce? Do you know the amount of peace I have? Do you see this, this skin? <laughs> Glowing. <laughs> you can still make jokes. She can still make jokes. Listen, because I was got obedient. Here so happy and joyful. Let me put it that way. Because the like, joy Man, of the Lord is my strength. Come on. And I've been obedient. Sometimes, sometimes we look to the world for advice on how to handle life when Jesus was the only one who drove this car of life effectively. Sure. Don't listen to your friends saying, Chomi, you must fight. What am I fighting for? Mm. This is God ordained. Mm. My moving out, I got a word from God. Sure. Come on. Let me go and walk in the way that he directs me. Sure. Come People on. look at me crazy. I'm broke right now. Why? Because I'm turning the other cheek. Yeah. And does he not provide for me? Mm. Do I not look good, girl? You do. Am I not eating? You, do you, I not have an apartment? Listen. Is my kid not in school? Come on. If I fought, Gabelo, I wouldn't be here. Yeah. Because I'd be in therapy, reworking the lack of yeah. peace that I have. But obey God even when it doesn't make sense in the mm. valley. Obey him. Because he has the answers. Sure. Why we never ask him? I don't know. Who do we think we are? He's God. He created us. He understands us. So just listen to that guy. He knows what he's talking about. I love that. I love that. What habits are meaningful to you and how have they contributed to your mental health? You spoke about therapy. Yes. But I want you to touch on a few habits that are very meaningful to you. Let's say in the season that you're currently in and how are they contributing to your mental health? So the way I wake up in the morning. Yeah. Centers me. Yeah. No matter what's happening that day. Because yeah. divorces are very messy. I can imagine. And when somebody's intent on fighting you, whew, yeah. And you have to take the blows because the Holy Spirit says you must take them. And you turn the other cheek. But yeah. you know, Holy Spirit, hold me back is sure. how I live every day. I'm just like, Holy Spirit, hold me back because yeah. I want to throw a punch. Yeah. A few couple of uppercuts. Yeah. But the, the Lord says, no, you know how happy I was this week? Um, he allowed me to speak about those who are gossiping about me. Sure. So I don't even say that. I have to deny myself on that level. Sure. I don't even say what I want to say when I want to say it. Mm. I say, God, when? I feel this. I'm very honest. I'm angry. I want to cuss a few people out, mm. okay? Because what are they saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he says not yet. He mm. kept he kept bringing Exodus 1414 to me. He's like, I, the Lord, will fight for you. For you. He just kept bringing it up. I'm like, mm. I want to fight for myself. Sometimes you just want to fight for yourself Indy and get Masami. it out there. Right? It's on the line. Yeah, you understand? Come on, I get you. So the habit is engagement with God, yeah. right? I do things that make me happy. Sure. Small things. Yeah. You know, put on a mask on a random Thursday. Take a walk and if you want to take a walk. Yeah. Be in the bar. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Go get a nice dessert. Mm. You know, at that shop that we all like. Are you sweet tooth? Yes. You have a sweet tooth. Yes. Okay. That lemon cheesecake makes my day. Okay. All right. Mm. Do little things. I also honor my my voice. Mm -hmm. you know, and I believe the voice of the spirit. Randomly, God said to me, "Drive slow today." Sure. 
I'm going to work. Yeah. But I'm driving, I'm driving but you're slow. Driving slow. So it's, it's obedience at that level for me takes care of my mental health. Sure. Sorry, somebody. Sure. Obedience. Obedience is Doing how the I things take care, that you love. How I take care of my mind. Because mm-hmm. God, trust me, every commandment he has, has our mental health in mind. Ooh, say that again. Every, every commandment God has, has our mental health in mind. Think about sexual immorality. You sleep with this man. He ain't your husband. He leaves you tomorrow. What does that do to your mental health? Wrecks you. What an intentional father. Yeah. That's all he cares about. That's why it says his love is from everlasting to everlasting. Sometimes you look at the commandments of God as punishment. Sure. Like, I must be th- How can I not allow him to touch and titivate sure. me? Yeah. He must titivate me because he's nice. But God knows the sure. effects of that down the line. So obedience is how I take care of my mental health. Over and above that, mirror affirmations. This was taught to me by a lady who's holding my hand through this process. She also went through a divorce and she's teaching me that you have to speak positive words to yourself. Because when you come from a circumstance like mine, either I was speaking really poorly to myself or my spouse. So I have to reverse that, those pathways in my mind to remind myself of the glory of God that's in me. So look yourself in the eye in the mirror and say, hi, girl. Good today. Mm. You are the child of the most high God. Mm. You're beautifully and wonderfully made. Remind yourself, mirror affirmations, that's how I do it. Sure. Mm. And you're a strong woman. Like <laughs> I think throughout our conversation we both established that we're quite similar. We're yeah, quite similar. Twins. Kindred um, spirits. So very strong. Um, and you would think that we don't need outside mm. affirmation or mm. to affirm ourselves, mm. right? But you're saying now, or rather that if someone had to say really mean things to you, you you wouldn't need to go back and affirm yourself because they affected you. Mm -hmm. But now you've seen that you you have been affected. And so, you know, can I drag us strong girls a little bit? Sure, you can. Oh, you you've been coming for me, so (laughs) just just do it. Can I drag the strong ladies out here (laughs) for a little bit? We are not strong Mm. and we know it. We overcompensate. Because we are so soft. Ah, oh, we're little. You know Easter eggs? Yeah, we have a hard chocolate shell. But you're so gummy in the middle, baby. And you know it. I don't like that mm, you're saying that. And you know it. <laughs> yeah. But you, pre- you, you created. Remember, somebody said our personalities are coping mechanisms. Sure. Ooh. Who you are as a strong woman. Is a coping, coping mechanism. Absolutely. What are you coping with? With the fact that you are sensitive on the inside. You're tender. So you create this hard shell. You've put on fig leaves. Yeah. Ah, come on, somebody, Adam and Yeah, Eve. yeah. You've put on fig leaves. And now essentially yeah. you're hiding. Mm-hmm. Sure. But you're not strong. Mm. And what I love about our father is he welcomes you to break. Sure. Sure. Mm. He wants you to break. You know, this, this morning I was reading Psalms 13 and Psalms 142. You know how Psalms 13 starts? It says, how long, God, will you forget me forever? Mm. That's breaking. Strong woman. Hmm? You're not strong. And you know it. That's why you created this persona to survive. To scare off the people who yeah. could potentially hurt you. You want to scare them off so that they think, yo, don't mess with Kabelo, haibu, haibu. You know, Kabila Vele. No, you are very soft on the inside. I'm sorry to break it to you. You know, life is so much easier when you allow yourself to be vulnerable. You don't have to carry the burden of strength. It's a burden. Because you end up finding yourself so lonely. Because you closed yourself off from feeling. So feel. Feel. There's beauty in feeling. This is the beautifully and wonderfully made that God has given you. But I'll heard. And I've all heard. However, honor yourself by allowing yourself to be vulnerable and open through life. A weight comes off your shoulder. And one thing I love about our God, he's Jehovah Rapha. So when they hurt you, he's going to heal you. As long as you're being obedient, right? If you're hurt by obedience, God is faithful to heal you. So don't let the fear of being hurt make you cage yourself up because you're trying to protect yourself. God is your protector. He's your refuge. He's your fortress. So be you. 
honor you, honor exactly who you are. If you're tender, be tender. Be tender, be tender. If he hurts you, this your husband hurts you, God will heal you. But stop closing yourself up because you might find, huh? I, God is reminding me of the scripture where it speaks about the wife of an unbelieving spouse. It says through your obedience, you may bring them to Christ. So be fully obedient in submitting to your husband, even though you can see oh, he's not very good with the finances, but he's my leader. So let me just submit myself. And the tenderness of your femininity when it comes into that makes him a man who says, I need to honor my, my wife because she never chastises me. So I need to get financial education um, and figure this money situation out. Yeah? <laughs> the ways of the Lord make zero sense. That's one thing I've, 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 I've come to understand. Mm. Is the wisdom God's of way. God... You're just going to look at... I give myself bombastic side eyes every day. Just like, I'm literally swallowing my saliva so yeah. that I don't cry right Yeah, Yeah, baby. I look at myself with a bombastic side eye, and by eye, I mean my fleshly self, going, is this you? Yeah. Strong woman of God. Yeah. You don't even have five rent to your name because sure. you're being obedient. Sure. Show me. Get that pension fund. Fight for it. Sure. But God said, no. If somebody asks you for your shirt, Give them yeah, your yeah. coat too. Sure. And that has breeded so much peace. That's why I'm able to show up with pure, genuine joy on my social media. It's real. It's, it's not it, fake. No, it is real. It's very, very real. The joy that I feel. And that is the gift of obedience. Sure. It's just rest, peace, mental soundness. What does the Bible say? God did not give us a spirit of fear, but that of a sound mind. mind. Sound mind. Obedience gives you a sound mind. You're busy being anxious, struggling because your mind is not sound. Why? You are not being obedient. You're not being obedient to the voice of the spirit. So your spirit is consistently grieved and doesn't give you rest. But if you become obedient, I promise you, trust me, doesn't make sense. I know. And it's scary sometimes. It's so scary. What do you think? I moved out without a penny to my name. Like, what was I going to do? It's scary, but God, Jehovah Jireh, I, may, I named the Wi-Fi to my place, the Lord will provide. Sure. Because everything he's given me since January 1st until now, I, I didn't have it. Sure. But I said, I'm going to obey you. And he showed up. Yeah. 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 Just give me a moment. Okay, honey. Let me just swallow my saliva. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I told you to bring tissues. This, this face and is she done. Said, no, Miss Edie, I'm not gonna need this no tissues. This face is done. I said, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're probably gonna need you for another I mean, a part two. I'm available. Um, I, I before before we we, we wrap up, I want to ask how important has community been for you in this season? Oh, everything. I ask this because yeah. um. It is one of our pillars mm. as beloved, mm -hmm. um, one of our values as beloved. Mm -hmm. And I believe that it is the heartbeat of the triune God. Yeah. I mean, we were fashioned in community, God, the mm -hmm. Father, the Son, Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. And um, I can imagine when you're going through something so hard, mm. um, somewhat embarrassing, Ooh. what has community look like and what how has community contributed to your walk of healing mm. yeah. so my experience with community is double-sided okay i don't know why yeah but in the face of divorce the shame of it i think has people who you once identified as your community step away from yeah, you. yeah can imagine sure so Oof. My deepest wounds are from my community. Yeah. But my greatest healing is from the new community I've received. Sure. Mm. Because there's sisters on my page who have walked the journey that I walked. Sure. So community has been vital for me in this time. Jesus didn't die for the one. He died for the many. Mm. And, you know, we look at scriptures like, do not be in the habit of forsaking the assembly as this rule we must follow. Like, I must go yeah. to church every Sunday. And we don't ask ourselves why. Mm. 
if, if it is the sacrifice of Christ that sanctifies me and allows me access into heaven, why do I need to go to church? Yeah. He already died on the cross. Yeah. So why do I need... Because in community, God acts. Yeah. He's able to... I, I was asking recently on my page, why do you go to church? Yeah, yeah. We go for the worship. We go for the message. But that's not the purpose of church. Mm. You know that? The purpose of church is for you to inspire your brethren to good works, mm. to edify one another, to encourage each other on the Sunday. So if you're going to church, sitting, listening to pastor, walking out, honey, you missed the you mission. You missed it. And yeah. you missed the point. Because sure. community builds. Sure. Sure. It encourages. Say, community All right? builds. It builds. Oh, yeah. To have somebody look at you and say, sure. you're going to be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Because some days your faith wanes yeah. in the valley. Yeah. And you need your brethren to hold you up. Yeah. This is why we, we do ourselves such an injustice by not being vulnerable, vulnerable in the church. I was going to get there. Yeah. Because we don't know that Gavelo is going through a lot in our marriage. Sure. It took the podcast for yeah. some of your, congre your fellow congregants to know. Yeah. And you don't know that they walked where you walked. Mm. That they have valuable lessons they can share with you. Mm. That they were comforted by God so they could be able to comfort, comfort you. Sure. So community is important in holding me up. Mm. Oh, I have a woman who holds me up in Jamaica. Let me tell you that woman. Sure. Every day she speaks to me. Sure. And she reminds me. Because she's walking the journey just a beat ahead of me. She mm. got divorced last year. Mm. So she's telling me that you're going to feel this. You're going to go through this. You're mm. going to experience this. And this is what the word of God says about that. So... Community holds me. It gathers me when I'm broken yeah. and pieces me together with glue, sure. the glue of the word. Sure. That's what community does for me. There's a sister of mine who calls me and she just calls to pray. Because sure. what is the point of prayer is that we don't hear. Yeah. You're praying for me. I don't even hear your yeah, prayer. Yeah. I need to hear what you're saying about me to God concerning yeah, me concerning so me. that I am encouraged. Sure. If, you say, if I hear that somebody says to me, God, give her the strength to wake up. Sure. So when I'm feeling like I can't even wake up, you I remember. remember that, no, my sister prayed Come for on. me. Yeah. And I claim her words. Because sometimes we can't even pray for ourselves. Yeah. So community for me is holding me like glue, sure. like this. Without those women, without those women, I would have lost myself to sorrow. But they remind me of the goodness of the Lord, that I don't know them. Yeah. And they don't. They take care of me. Sure. And those I thought would take care of me are nowhere to be found. Sure. So community holds me together yeah. on the days that are really hard. Because trust me, I may be joyous, but the enemy, one thing about that guy, he's yeah. prowling around like a lion looking for whom he is yeah. to devour. And when nighttime comes and my sorrows descend on me, I go back to those voice notes sure. that Kimmy sends me. Sure. And I listen. So that's what community is for. Yeah. Don't die alone. Jesus died for the many. Yeah. And I know in, in a lot of churches that, that point of edification is missed. We yeah. think that the message is the edification, but it's the interaction Ooh. that is the edification. It's the somebody holding your hand saying, I remember you're still struggling to conceive yeah. and I'm still praying for yeah. you regarding you. Sure. That gives you that renewed strength. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Sure. They will mount up on wings like eagles. Sure. That's what community is for. Sure. I think the last point I will make is community for me <laughs> has exposed my fear of being vulnerable. Mm -hmm. um, God has allowed me to walk with two ladies. Apart from my beloved community, mm -hmm. um, God has allowed me to walk with two ladies. So I mentor them. Mm -hmm. And I discovered... Alyssa is one of them and I follow her on yeah, TikTok. Yeah, her, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I've discovered, man, the way those two girls love me is, some, is something else. And I discovered through mentoring them that I struggle with vulnerability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you mentioned, I think, a large part of why many people probably didn't know that I was going through the most in my marriage is because I struggle mm -hmm. with vulnerability. It's not easy. It's, it's not easy. Mm -hmm. It took one night where I was with my husband and um, two couples... Um, and we were just having a conversation and I was able to be open and vulnerable with them. And one of them said, okay, stop talking a little. Let's pray for you. Because I, I was like going in, mm, in anger. It's like pent up I was just rage venting. And I was resentment. And mm. he literally said, let's pray for mm. you. 
and they prayed for me. And when I when I left that day, I was reminded of that scripture in Peter that talks about confess your sins one mm-hmm. to another mm-hmm. so that they may pray for you and you may be healed. Mm-hmm. Because after that prayer, I mm-hmm. promise you, I kid you not, the anger, the resentment I felt before, mm-hmm. I didn't feel anymore. Yeah. And so I'm really learning to be vulnerable, not just with those God has positioned in my life who will reflect the heartbeat of the Father for me, mm-hmm. um, but I'm learning to be vulnerable with God himself. Yeah. And I'm um, well on that journey. It's not easy. I can hear. Especially when you're a strong woman. Exactly. Because Isdi Masako is always on the line. Exactly. But it's not Isdi Masako. It's eh, the of the flesh. We are learning that now. Yeah. <laughs> we are learning that yes. now. Thank you so, so much. It's been um, a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. You were vulnerable. I appreciate that. I mean, am I okay um, with it? I don't know. But I will. I want you to know that <laughs> we don't take it lightly mm. here. I am honored that you would trust me and mm. our community with your heart. Mm. Um, I know that you've gained a sister in me. I'll be praying for you Yay. whenever God puts you on my heart. Thank you, God. And I'll pray um, for you. I appreciate I, it. I, I, I'll pray for you. I know I what it is. It. You know, when you asked me to do this, and you, you had a very busy week. I think you were doing yeah. something Oof. on the weekend. Da, da, da. Can I tell you how embarrassed I was? Why? I am more the perfectionist side of me. Yes, Gabelo, yes, I yes. value excellence, but yeah. sometimes, like we were talking mm. about, it tips into perfectionism. It's, okay. it's not really excellence. It's okay. Because God I, covers you. It was so you. hard. God covers you. Don't worry <laughs> about that. Yeah. But when you were doing that, and I realized, and I have grace for you because I understand having a calling on your life. Yeah being a mother and being a wife, yeah. that stretches you. Yeah. And the little that you feel you're doing, which is not little, because how many lives are you changing? How many people mm. are going to watch this? Don't ever feel like you're not doing enough. You're doing more than enough. To do all those three things and do them well. Now, let me not say well, because I understand as one with a perfectionist mind. Yeah, so I don't feel like doing I'm doing it them. to the best of your capability yeah. mm. in that moment is enough. And God covers the rest. He will, he will continue to fulfill his purpose in you, even when you drop the ball. That's the beautiful thing about being in Christ, right? Is even when you drop the ball, he's advocating for you. He's saying, don't look at them, look at my sacrifice. So even you in service, when you drop the ball, don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Say, God, I did what I could. This is the best I could do. Because I also have other responsibilities. And you can't drop the ball in your marriage. Yeah. We spoke about that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Wild, wild west. Okay, step up. You said you want the ding, 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 ding. So ding, 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 ding. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't drop the ball. Do what you can. There's so many things that affect our energies. Mm. Being a mom is not easy. Some nights you're not sleeping because baby's sick. You know, our hormones. Can I tell you? Somebody go Google how your menstrual uh, cycle affects you. Okay? On a spiritual level. All right? So there's times in the month where you're going to struggle. Come on, educate yourself about your body, woman of God, so that you start to understand that it ain't the enemy. It's, it's, your, it's your bone. <laughs> it's your egg. <laughs> your egg is frustrated. <laughs> it wanted fertilization, didn't get. Now it's mad. All right? Yeah. So be, You're hilarious. <laughs> show yourself grace, babe. Yeah. yeah. The grace that Jesus shows you. Mm-hmm. Perfectionists, show yourself the grace of God. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. It's affecting you. And God cares about your mental health. That's why he says, cast your burden. Yes. So cast the burden of not doing it the way you wanted to do it. And say, God, I really wish this, but I could only do this. So I didn't hold it against you. That's yeah. why I followed up with you. Yeah. Hi, you Thursday's did a great coming. Job. What's going on? Are we doing this? Yeah, Thanks. no, Because no. I know that God purposed for me to be here. Yeah. So whatever oh, you yes, did, you did, whatever you did didn't matter. Yeah. What matters is the purpose of God with this platform. Yeah. So I was going to show up. And the people, the right people, Mm -hmm. regardless of whether or not you're perfect, regardless of whether the lighting is perfect, or the audio, cabello, or the setting, or the back table setting. (laughs) Why are you exposing me? I'm just saying. Why is she exposing me? (laughs) She's hectic with a capital H. Uh, Oh my gosh. God will do with it. Yeah. I love when the Bible says, go in in the strength that you have to Uh, Gideon. I say Gideon is one of my I best friends. I want a Gideon. Ne- Mamela. Nehemiah. Mamela. Like, and Job. In this Job, season. Job will get stuck. Job will get a paradox. Like, anyway. What's the one in one sentence? Yeah. Very short sentence. Yeah. How would you encourage the men and the women listening? Surrender your life to God. Yeah. 
it's going to solve so many, so many of your problems. You're trying to hold on to control because it makes you feel safe. Yeah. But that's the worst thing you could do to yourself because your life is bigger than you. Sure. You can't shoulder it. Sure. It demands so much of you. Sure. Therefore, give it to the one who created sure. it. Come on. Give it to him. Surrender your life. There's no point. Have you won all these many years that you've been shouldered? You, you are, you're struggling, my brother. <laughs> you're shaking. You're shaking. So please, surrender your life to God. Yeah. My word, I want to scream it on the mountaintops yeah. because that is the answer. Yeah. I've been asking myself for 15 years, why is this Christian walk so hard? Yeah. Yeah. And that's because I hadn't surrendered. Sure. Surrender, 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 surrender. Fully, everything, your parenting, your marriage, your work life, sure. your thoughts, your time spending, your fine surrender, loved one. Sure. Surrender. Yeah, I hear it all. It's noise. Surrender. Surrender. That's all I'm that's encouraging. Yeah. Because I know the amount of encouragement that comes from surrender. Sure. God, my mother, the word of God is encouraging me. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Holds me up. You're stirring yourself up in yes, the world. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when you when you surrender to somebody, you get to know them. Sure, sure. You've been safe for 30 years. Go relearn who God is. Sure. Go sure. educate yourself who God mm. is. You don't mm. know God. Mm. You think because you've been here for 30 years, mm. you know. No, you don't. Mm. Go. Listen, when God says, ha, okay, when God says he's the prince of peace, sure. when Jesus says that, and you're not peaceful as a Christian, that's a red flag. Yeah. Mm. Because surely, if Christ is in you, peace is a given. Sure. Oof. But if you're not peaceful, Question how you are doing this walk because some there's a part of you that's not off. surrendered. Yeah. Off. Come on, figure out what's off. She's coming for me, and I know she's coming for you, honey. Mm. Go learn what's off. Yeah, yeah, it is a given. Sure. You don't even have to sweat for the peace yeah. if you are in Christ, sure. it has to be there. Sure. It is his very nature. If you're not loving and you're in Christ, are you in Christ? Sure, are you? Come on. God is love. Are you abiding? God is love. Yeah. Therefore, if the Holy Spirit is in me, I can only be loving. Sure. Sure. Yeah? yeah. Stop grieving the Spirit with your unloving ways. Sure. Sure. Stop. Sure. Stop. I love that. I love that. I love that. Musidi, thank you. I'm going to come back. She's going to come back. She's going to come back. See, we are building that mm. life of love, wellness, abundance, and mm -hmm. impact one brick at a time. Mm -hmm. And we're going to do it vulnerably so, honestly so, mm. um, and, and just, yeah, in fun. <laughs> I enjoyed this conversation. I know that you did as well. Mm -hmm. I really hope that you take the words that, you know, Musidi allowed for God to place in her heart so she could speak to us today. Um, and that... Yeah, ask Holy Spirit to help you walk this journey called life. Surrender. Yeah. I want you guys to like, comment below, uh, subscribe, and let's grow together. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, baby. All right, bye, guys. Bye.